What's up, everyone? Uh, Fashionably late, as usual, because we're chic. Um, hello. As you know, I am MNDR. I am a an artist, producer, and writer, and we are here today on the Splice MNDR Diamonds live stream, smashing gates and making diamonds with the iconic, the legendary... <laughs> the unbelievable the next level talent oh this is an icon though that's why no. i'm like no sure i'll be no. here with you girl yes, girl no we day. are here to celebrate the absolute queen of music miss win <laughs> bennett yeah <Yay! Yay! laughs> we're celebrating all everyone each other us just being here we made it this we morning. made it <laughs> We made it this made morning. It. <laughs> okay, and for all of you new Diamonds members that are joining the stream, I see the stream is starting to bubble. Just know we're going to be answering questions in real time. I just want to give a background of when. And just so you know, uh, MNDR and Splice, we are dedicated to building equity and showing um, non-male creatives and our allies working at 
at high levels in the music industry celebrating us and giving away our ga- giving mm. away gate smashing secrets on, mm. su- on success honey mm-hmm. so you know after the stream make sure to join the uh Diamonds channel on Splice's Discord. I am in there all the time answering questions, building community, and we are basically that's where the tea is spelled. So get in there. Okay. Ooh, I'm actually tea. doing a run on amazing free plugins and the great chains to use. So mm. on that. Um, all right, let's discuss okay. Win Bennett. Okay, if you all don't know. Wynn is originally from New Jersey. Okay, honey. Mm-hmm. She went to the, she went from Jersey, girl. Mm-hmm. She moved to New York. She went to the new school. You study music, mm-hmm. composition. Yep. She mm-hmm. always laughs, but I'm obsessed with that. She worked for Folk Loss because it blows <laughs> my mind. Because I'm like, <laughs> it was just a, total... a moment in time. See, you know? she we'll down... get into all that. We'll I, get into... We're gonna <laughs> get all it. Da- no downplaying. No diminishing. This is a... No, no, no. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. She did, honey. <laughs> Moon. Okay. Icon. So. She is classically trained mm-hmm. in jazz, key piano. Mm-hmm. Yep. She, uh, but also she's one of the founding members of the iconic um, alternative pop group. Yeah. Indie, they say, now indie, they call it indie sleaze. Apparently, they call it indie sleaze. You know, we so were kind of on the circuit at the same time. Yeah, Twin yeah. Shadow, give it up. Hey. And I just want to go through some of her credits because they're impressive as not only the founding member, writer, producer for Twin Shadow, but here are the artists she's worked with that she has huge cuts with. Not only she is Grammy nominated, she produced on Janelle Monet's Dirty Computer mm-hmm, album. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You produced the record that she did featuring Grimes. Yep. And also, you did uh, a song in Space Jam Two mm-hmm. uh, with Duck with Duckworth. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we love this is where our main girls Taylor Parks, Haim. Yeah. I mean, the list goes oh, yeah, on. Heim. Serpent with feet. Don't know mm-hmm. if you know, but you need to because that they are amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, she is up and coming production cuts with Kid Cudi, Jamila Woods. Brie One Way, Runway, oh, yeah, who's Brie, yeah. ugh, I die for Brie. I die for all those artists. Boys World, she has worked with Lizzo, Alex, Hudson Moak, Jump Baptiste, Ash Nico, the iconic Uffy, who I'm de- I die oh, for. Yeah. I just saw her last week. Oh, awesome! Um, amazing, but amazing. not only that, because you have these huge classical chops, you are also an active composer. Um, when was the composer on Bama Rush. It was HBO's highest uh, like streamed docu- mm-hmm, documentary mm-hmm. premiere that they've ever had. Crazy. When I uh, w- did the soundtrack, you're mm-hmm. soundtracking podcasts, other documentaries, mm-hmm. shorts, films. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, she is a composer and has composed, you, you know, you have had... Um, pieces debuted at. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, it's I worked so, with all these orchestras back in the day. Yes, and, and you know, ballet companies. Yes, yeah, modern dance companies. Um, I worked with this uh, choreographer, Bill T. Jones, and his. That was kind of like my foot in the door, composing for you know modern dance companies, and he's kind of like the Alvin Alley of the '80s. I guess that's kind of how I would describe him and um yeah so I just had all these different paths and it's so hard sometimes for me to we just started I gotta say this I gotta say this (laughs) she debuted playing piano at the Kennedy Center yes yes, I was 18 with with my composition mentor this guy Daniel Bernard Romain um who really who I met when I was about 15 I was at the Harlem School of the Arts yes and he was just like Bloop, like you should you. work with me and, and and so he was big in the new music scene in New York yes and um he was just like yeah like come help me on my projects and da 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 he helped me also like go through the process of getting into college and because my parents weren't those types of people really <laughs> and um and yeah and that just led me to all these different projects and he yeah and we can get into all that but yeah, he, he, oh, so the whole point, sorry, I'm a little tired. The whole point of that is that he was playing 
the Kennedy Center. He was premiering a lot of his works and some other works. Um, we played other composers as well. But he was like, I want you to be to play piano for the show. And so that was kind of like a big moment. And, I mean, a huge moment. Yeah. But before we dive into all this, mm -hmm. okay, I just want to know, like, currently... What are you listening to, and what is inspiring you at the moment? Okay, so I, I, <laughs> I, where have you been? Because I actually pre-asked this question, and my mind was a balloon. I I am someone who just I love YouTube. I love playing <laughs> all these YouTube polls. And this weekend, I was um, in Houston playing a show with Twin Shadow. I was saying that it's been four years since you played a show. Yes, and was Houston there for you? Yeah, Houston was, and it's a Houston. great city, and the music that comes out of Houston, it's great. And yeah, amazing. We just, and we just have some old friends. And, um, but we were going down like Smashing Pumpkins hole and like Tool, live Tool videos. Yes. And it's like the 30th anniversary of Siamese Dream and that was kind of like the main reason we went down this kind of like 90s era. So I guess at the moment I'm just revisiting Tool and <laughs> Smashing Pumpkins. I'm here for this. And we were watching this crazy show this live interview with like Maynard, the singer of Tool. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a huge Tool fan. Okay, so you're, okay. yeah, you're, like, you're in good company. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. We went down like a perfect circle. Then we're looking up like a perfect Pat, circle. Yes. You know, like, she, where, what'd she do? Yeah, we just went down this hole. So that's kind of, I'm in that world a little bit. But at the same time, I, I just had to make this real. Um, and in this brief, it was like, you know, Italian inspired 1930s, 40s kind of orchestral. Wait, but what were you making the reel for? It was just a job that I, I may or may not get. You know, it's like for, one for of like those, a for like scoring. Scoring. Thing. Like film or documentary? Do you know yet? It, 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 it would be a docu-series, but docu -series. the music is, is oh. kind of super opposite of. So then it's I went down. extremely chic. You know? <laughs> Anyways, so you <laughs> I mean, I probably don't have, you know, it's like I made this all this music and then it's like, well, I don't know if um, I'm going to get it or not. But, uh, but then I went down that rabbit hole yesterday so kind of like weird weird vocals and bossa nova e type music but it's like all these old italian movie scores so so i'm pretty sure like in a day in the life of when it's like hey make a beat for kid, kid cuddy because he needs you <laughs> asap um slash um what's tool up to yeah I mean, slash tool. i need to make like a composition for 1930s like <laughs> music for a docu docu series on hbo go i mean god has some chops for that i feel like <laughs> So my inspo is new in aunt Tenny. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, weird. I, I I love all music, so yeah. You're chic. Me too. I feel like you also listen to everything. I mean, we're chic. Yes, yes. <laughs> we're not actual Nile Rogers chic, but just like the general <laughs> adjective of chic. Um, are we dating ourselves by saying Nile Rogers? What's up? Let's let me just check out the chat here. Ooh, we got Tool fans. Hello. Oh, yeah. Buffalo on the B, you know I'm here for you. You love a Jersey girl. Ooh. Hey, Buffalo's, Buffalo's hey. from Jersey. Throw your questions into the chat. We're going to be answering everything. Um, but I want to dig in. I always come prepared because I'm a Virgo. <laughs> Big up to Virgo great. season. Oh, yeah. When's your birthday? It was September 12th. They turned 22. Oh, my God. Happy birthday. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> oh shoot, we gotta celebrate. <laughs> We're celebrating right now. Okay, Let's just okay, celebrate each other. Um, okay. This is what I need everyone to understand. Is like I wanna know your journey from like when you knew music was like your drug, your passion, mm -hmm. and how like give me the cliff notes from like that moment, mm -hmm. if it was when you're a kid, teenager, whatever, to like where you're at now. Okay. And like the shoots and ladders. Cool. Of that. I love it. <laughs> um, well, I was telling a little bit before, but my my dad's a musician, so yes. he's a jazz. He he's a, he was a jazz drummer. He's still alive, but he he doesn't play anymore. And um, is that what he did when you were a kid? Yeah. So he. I, you know what, as long as I've known you, I did not know that your parents were musicians or your dad was. My dad. My mom's like just an artist type, you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So she she dabbles in kind of everything, and she's kind of acting now at her older 
age, but um, that's like a whole other story. Get it, moms. Um, oh, moms. Hashtag moms. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I think music's just been around the house. And they they had this like Roland weird keyboard. I don't even know what it was called, but I, I need to figure out what that was. It was but. Roland weird keyboard. Yeah, XP 80s, probably like practice from yeah something. Yeah. <laughs> had an arpeggiator on it. I just yeah. remember like, and there's videos of me playing at like two, three. I think I just always gravitated towards the piano. And I think around like six, my mom was like, okay, let's. She should take lessons. She likes music, and I loved going to piano lessons. Like I loved practicing and wow. that was kind of like the start of it for me and um and then I became a teenager and uh you know 11 12 discovering like the music that I love I was always listening to the radio or whatever and at the time hot 97 in New York yes. was playing yes. in, in the 80s Girl. it was all freestyle all freestyle Henny. you know yes no Sarah. exactly yes. <laughs> Oh my God, Lisa, Shannon! Lisa, Lisa, like Shannon! Like the, oh my like God! Music, so that's like deeply ingrained. <laughs> Lisa, in my, Lisa in the call oh, jam, you know, like so that that music. I'm like, wow. So it's like that. Can, and can yeah. I just sort of really quick mm-hmm. freestyle music? Mm. Yes, yeah, so there's freestyle hip hop, right? Right, right. Freestyle. I just want to give like a mm-hmm. like a factoid. Yeah, please. J- jump in. Freestyle please. was in between disco and what I would say electro and house yeah, and techno. Definitely. Where like electronic music got really standardized. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So probably the biggest freestyle record is probably Madonna's "Lucky Star." Oh yeah, totally. yeah, 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 yeah. Just to give you. It was like they hadn't figured out the BPMs and all mm-hmm. the rules of electronic music, which I hate because I hate rules. Go. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good description. I love it because it was kind of like wild. It was like, wild, it was like wow, or like super fast, and you're like wow, what, or weirdly what slow. Yeah, Are yeah, you ever totally. You're like, God, this is weird. <laughs> they didn't know. <laughs> it's, They're figuring it out. Yeah, but Hot ninety seven. Yeah, I mean there are there are places in the country that were like Chicago, uh, New York that were absolutely like supporting free like mm-hmm. this style of music that was essentially underground. Totally. It totally. wasn't all over in the nation yet, though, for right, the U.S. Right. Yeah, but definitely New York was, especially Latin I know, freestyle. I was like, wow, I love that. And I'm, and I'm, you know, how do you do freestyle today? Girl. It's so, and I'm like, I love. Every day of my life. I know. It's, okay, I'm so, because I love, that's like. Girl, we need to collab on my record. It's, it's, I would love it's to. freestyle. Oh shit! Yeah, I'll play you some of it. You're gonna oh, did, did, did oh, die. God, okay, awesome. sorry, I just promoted okay. myself. I'm so glad that you're Bitch, doing get that. Yeah, coverage. Hello. Yes. Okay. Anyways, but talk more um, about freestyle. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm no, like no, dead right no, now. No, no, no. I love it. Um, oh yeah. So uh, just all of these different musical influences when I was a kid, and then and so the freestyle stuff was I was still really young, but I was hearing it on the radio, and I loved it. And then yes. when I became a teenager, I was like, okay, discovering like metal and punk and whatever was on the radio so like grunge at the time and like tool or whatever um even like things like the cranberries or like green day of course and got yeah, radio flip then yeah, yeah yeah and um yeah and then getting into more obscure music and 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 you know at that time there was no like youtube or spotify or, so it was like going to the record store like going to the east there village was no and, streaming yeah, you no just time. had to go somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> no cell phones. Where you? There were cell phones, but not like. Hmm, no, wait, they what were is like giant like? bricks. <laughs> you had to go to a place, and then you ask the record yeah. store person. Yeah. What's cool? Or like, and then you try the picture. You're like, this is a cool yes. cover. Let you me would... get that. Yes. So that was the big part of discovering music at that time, which was so fun and awesome and. It was. And it was like a journey. Yeah, yeah. Not um, the band. <laughs> I'll do like a song or two. To, <laughs> you know. Um, and then the, like the 80s music, I think all the post-punk goth stuff, I think I just like always gravitated towards those sounds. And um, So you had like a healthy curiosity in like all these different, like yeah. you would find music and just yeah. be like, what is this genre about? Yeah, and then going to... A place like the Harlem School of the Arts, which is like a like, so you know, cool. also whatever those kids were listening to. So then I, I was like discovering Erica Badu and and um, yeah, the Roots, all, all the all the hip hop stuff. And I think just liking all different kinds of music prepared me for like what I'm doing now. It's like now I have a Rolodex of 
influences to draw from, I guess. If that makes sense. Like, yeah, man. That's, I mean, this day and age, I, this day and age. But yeah. um, I think that's like a great, like, gate smasher is like, n- know a lot about music, man. Mm-hmm. Because like, making music isn't, is really democratized. It's especially mm-hmm. like with great, like, there's great tools, Splice, like, free VSTs, yeah. like, the, you know, d- the you can get you know recording software for nothing now mm-hmm. and it comes in your computer and yeah yeah so that gate is smashed but knowing all yeah. these genres is like a huge asset in the room definitely or even huge. like drawing from those inspirations it might be totally left field but like there are times when i'm like okay i like love odb or you like Lonnie and Simone, girls feeling like, okay, I know this is a weird way of tying it in, but maybe the rhythms of us are even just like the energy of a Thelonious Monk song. Maybe I, Cameron was listening to that yesterday, and I was like, this, I was like, this stuff is like ODB, but it's also metal. Like, yes. And anyway, uh, yes. Yeah. So, anyway, long story short, yes. I end up going to, um, the new school for classical composition. Amazing. I also met like um, a mentor figure of mine, Daniel Ramin. Um, before that, I was studying with Barry Harris. He talked briefly about that when I was much younger. That was kind of like when I was eight years old. And Barry he, Harris was part of Sun Ra. So his, so his, um, so Barry is a jazz pianist mm-hmm. and kind of like a very well known like teacher of jazz. And he would always have his classes in New York. And then his friend outlived with him in this in this house which is actually the house that Thelonious Monk lived in this this woman the Baroness in like the 40s and 50s would oh like God. would like you know take care of jazz and they'd have jazz, jams at the house and she's like a big figure in jazz music so he lived at this house it just happened to be like in the town over in New Jersey so my mom met, met Barry she was taking vocal his vocal classes in New York and then she was like my daughter is like eight she she doesn't like her you know, local piano teacher trying to figure it out. And Richard was Sun Ra's ma- uh, manager who lived with Barry. He would also take the money at the door for the class, you know, drink a lot of Conan, like just like a character, right? <sighs> okay. And, um, but they lived together and, and, and Richard used to manage Sun Ra back in the day. If you ever watched Spaces of Place, Richard is the guy with the mirror, mirror face. Ah. And um, then I started, sorry, my, my mouth is dry. Um, yeah. Basically, I would go to lessons every Sunday to this house, and it was like Thelonious Monk's pianos, and it was like two huge Steinways, yellow keys. Like, clearly, there was a lot of smoke of <laughs> cigarettes back in the day, like newspapers, you know, it was a vibe. But um, Barry taught me about, like, I think more like the the energy of music, if that makes sense. He taught me, like, the bass, a lot of basics, like, major minor chords he really got me into like theory like this is a major chord versus like just reading notes on a page mm-hmm. he was also really into Bach and we would kind of do those exercises but a lot of our mornings would be like oh and also he didn't he never wanted my mom to pay so my mom would go to the supermarket drive Richard to the supermarket to, so they can get groceries they didn't have a car and 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 I guess that was the deal and then Barry would like give me lessons but um wow you know, be like, we play like chess. I, I My dad taught me chess when I was younger. So it's like, that's how we would start is like playing little chess. And then he'd kind of walk into the other room, do something. And I'm just like at the piano for a minute. And he's like, play those chords. It was just like a very free open. This is hippie like. Di- kind of hippy dippy. Vibe. You take a drink. This is yeah, like bohemian, like upbringing for mm-hmm. real. And like iconic, like groundbreaking, like artists. And my mom was experience. just trying to get me And your mom's to, all like, yeah, cool. I think she was just like... <laughs> Amazing exposure. It's so weird because <gasps> I think she didn't realize maybe. Yeah. She just... was just like, hey, can you guys like help my daughter? Da, da, da. And Richard was the one who was like, you got to bring one to the Harlem School of the Arts. And then anyway, fast forward. So... So you're at Harlem School for the Arts. You're going to you're going to the new school in New York. It must have j- it was new the new the new school. new new school the yeah. Madison College of Music. And, yep. um And so I met my one of my mentors at the Harlem School of the Arts, and his name's Daniel Bernard Ramin. And he he kind of helped me get on the track of thinking like thinking that I'm I'm I should go to school for composition to be a composer. Yes. You know, it was like going to school for like 
piano, which are basically just practicing classical music all day or yes, or a composition. And that was definitely more my lane. And I was also playing in, in bands. Of the, you know, it's like it just felt right. Um, the conservatory was really strict. I was trying to bring in like, you know, the beginnings of what Ableton or Logic was at the time. Or like key, I had a keyboard, like, you know, the Yamaha like, motif, which was not, not, you know, it was a modular so, sense, but it was something. And So you were um, bringing in like early digital recording. Yeah, I was trying. Like to, so- software and like, it was kind of wild back then as well. It wasn't. In school, in that kind of school, yeah, they yes. were not into it now. No. I'm I think it's like that's what it is like it's the curriculum now it's the curriculum so you, my teachers hated that and, back when I was in music mm, school I had the same experience okay. they were very mad at that mm, mm-hmm. yeah the, they they were like no if we did electronic music it, it was very like um Stockhausen mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, um yeah. analog and tape yes style yes, yes. and basic sound design yeah, structure yes, yes. So, yeah. so they were like, mm. 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 and then they're I, like, girl, <laughs> and you're like, I am the future. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> and then the 85 year old, you know, your training teacher was like, what? This is not music. And it's like, whatever. Okay. Yeah. And you're just um, like, cool, cool, cool but, thing, buddy. But um, yeah, that just kind of led me to. Daniel was working with, um, like, Bill T. Jones. He was Bill T. Jones' music director, and he was working with Philip Glass, and he was also, like, touring. (laughs) He he made his own, so Daniel made his own kind of group based on Philip Glass's, like, um, ensemble, where it was, like, all the music's music's based on these cells that repeat over time. And so, factoid, can I step mm -hmm. in? Yeah, please. Because I can't shut up, no, apparently. I, um, I can't so believe I'm talking this much, honestly. <laughs> Phil Klaus is kind of one of these rare composers, new composers that jumped into, like, pop culture lexicon mm-hmm. right in the 70s and 80s. Mm-hmm. And, and is most well-known for Einstein on the Beach mm-hmm. opera, yeah. right? But he saw music in cycles. So I would say it's, like, mm-hmm. c- cyclical music, probably, mm-hmm. like, a lot like Gamelon, but using... Yeah, totally. Using... Um, uh, modern Western mm-hmm. European um, foundational major minor yeah yeah uh, modal totally, scale systems totally. right yeah no totally absolutely get it yeah I the Gamelon it. that's a re- really great reference get it out here you got it. this girl <laughs> hello yes hello we get it. <laughs> that was take Amanda's music school class. I, I didn't totally get to work with them I would have been like one <laughs> two three four. <laughs> Um, <laughs> talk about ear training your ear training oh teacher can suck it it's she like the really best old. she was like she, she Phil was, Glass is kind of probably the best for ear training to be honest with you well so he oh man so oh he oh my god so he, girl so he he's he was so anyway this so this other group that I was in that Daniel created okay. was based off of Philip's ensemble so we so when I was in college I was touring with this what? new music it was Daniel's new music Ensemble. And you are like, so oh, cool. I, okay. No, I mean, what were you playing though? I'm I, sorry. I was playing piano. Okay. okay. And, and then like my version of like keys. I had like my module, not module. Sorry, I had a module. Um, di- different sounds. I also had the Roland five yeah. five get, groove box. Oh, I, get it, girl, that, with that groove that box. That I had uh-huh. that, and um, but it was like you know this music was like it was groove box and <laughs> class. It was like minimalism and you know trying to mix in like more modern whatever pop elements and. And because of that, we would have been BFFs if I, I wasn't oh my God. in Oakland, California. But you were, doing, I was in you were doing your thing. Why? Well, like, no, that's, another that's day, another day, another day, another day. <laughs> no, but we would have been BFFs. I'm mad that we met <laughs> later in life. Oh, okay. so I love that. I, I, I would have been like, yes, at the warehouse club. Um, and then, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, um, yeah. So, so Daniel brought me in to meet Philip and, and there was like a lot attached to it there was like a, like a lesson attached to it too and I worked yeah. with him and I also worked with him he had like this big concert at, at ASU Arizona State University I mean this was like 20 years I was like 20 years I mean Holy I'm I'm 30 let's just say but this is a, a long time yeah. ago yeah and um but because of those meetings so at that time I was in the crossroads it, it was like go on tour with and work with this choreographer Bill T. Jones who would like kind of a life-changing experience and first kind of really big job or 
this is like go to school and my university yeah. they weren't cool with it which which that I is can't so believe weak. That they weren't cool and that's why so then I had that's so why I remember talking to Philip about that and he probably doesn't really remember me honest it's just so long ago but I re- he was literally like because you know he said like Natalie Boulanger and all yeah. this he was just like learn all the rules and then break all the rules and that was the best wait, 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 wait. piece of advice. I Are you listening anyone... to this? <laughs> I mean, Are I was like, what am I going to do? do? Say it again. He said, learn all the rules and then break all the rules. Yes. Learn yeah. all the rules, then break mm-hmm. all the rules. So he... He was like, leave school, Henny. Yeah, he was like... <laughs> he was like, one, two, leave school, leave yeah, school, yeah. school. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> go on tour, yeah, you will learn everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of like, you don't have to go to school to learn everything you need to learn, but it's very useful to learn counterpoint for some people, maybe not for all people, you know? So he was just kind of coming from that tra- you know, school of thought. Yeah, um, well, you had this, I mean, that opportunity is like, hey, do you want to tour with Rihanna for new right, for right, new music yeah, yeah, composition? Exactly, I mean, yeah. that's the level of gravity it held. So, yeah, like, yeah. it was a no-brainer. Because like, yeah, you can so, always, school's there, you can go back to school. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. Then but I, you never did. I didn't. Yeah. Although I'm like, you know, I'm kind of, throughout the years, just because, you know, that's a little bit like, I need to look finish, and it's like... Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. You're good. You're making a living in music. You're like a fierce (laughs) legend of music. Oh, my God. Well, no, you are, actually. You You are. are. Um, Hi, that's a cat girl. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I know. I'm like, (laughs) woo! Um, Which, like, so, okay, so basically... You're in New Jersey. I'm gonna give you. I'm, I want to highlight. Both yeah, factors. I know this is very long winded. No, yes, I love yes, it. Yes. I love it. I just want like for audience because we have Please. new people coming in here, Please. um, into the chat. So, Wim Bennett, you are in New Jersey. Your your dad's a jazz drummer. Your mom is an artist. Mm-hmm. They see your interest in music and keyboard. You go and study with Bear with Barry Harris as a like a young person. Yes, who who is in, in this amazing bohemian um, environment that Thelonious Monk was nurtured in and, mm-hmm. and, and just like couldn't be better exposure. And then you go into the Harlem School, School of the, of the Arts. Arts for high school. You're introduced. You're li- listening to radio, Hot 97 Freestyle, mm-hmm. and this is grunge era, this is blah, blah, blah. And you're getting, you're sucking it all up pre-stream. So you had to go play this and listen. <laughs> and then... Um, um, and then from there, you go to the new school mm-hmm. in, in New York City for, for, for composition mm-hmm, in, the, mm-hmm. in the conservatory. Yep, yep, classical conservatory. And then, and then you're bringing in the new, new, mm-hmm. to the new, and the new is like, I don't know about that. Yeah, exactly. And then you basically get asked to go on tour with some of the biggest composers in new music. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then. And how old are we here? here? So I was like 20 when I left. Okay. And then so you left. I left, and then um, yeah, and I was like writing for Bill too. That was like one of the big moments, and and then I actually met George, the vocalist of Twin, Twin Shadow, Shadow, because he was brought into the Vilty Jones Arnie Zane Dance Company through someone else. Bill needed like a, a like a songwriter type, and then we built this piece together, and then um, oh, and then. <laughs> um, uh, we worked with Bill for a while. I was also, you know, playing in other bands in New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of strayed away from new music as in just mu- in just like the music scene. I was doing it, working with these modern dance companies, but I was also playing with bands outside of uh, those spheres, too. And then George was like, do you want to play on some of my like demos or like on tour, you know? And like Kush touring, this is like, you know, a 30 crew, but you know, it was like a crazy huge. And um, and I was like, okay. And that turned into like the first album of Twin Shadow. Wow. And then he was like, Do you wanna come on tour with me? We have a van. I have a van that we're all gonna drive. <laughs> like it really was like just different worlds. So then I was just like, yeah, I'm going from th- theaters playing to like much older crowd yes and then being like i'm i'm younger i should be in my 
You're touring the clubs. Yeah, and the clubs. And we did the club scene, you know, and then years of that, like all the albums and um, writing, producing with George. And that was like a 10 year chunk of really just doing Twin Shadow stuff. Yeah. And I mean, Twin Shadow played um, Afropunk Fest, Coachella. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the other festivals yeah, you played? Like, Palooza, Lala... like all the all the all the ones. I Sasquatch, mean, Squatch, like. Yes. Like, we did it, yeah. Yeah, Twin Shadow is, like, w- one of the biggest groups from that era. And I'm glad that you guys are starting, you all are starting to yeah, play again. Yeah, And it's a... Indie sleaze, Henny. Indie sleaze. Um, yeah, and then I didn't know that I was, like, really... Pro- I didn't know that that was a... Like, I knew what a producer was. Yeah. And then it kind of changed over time, right? Because now everything, you know, we can all produce ourselves or be in the box and... But um, b- before I get to production, yeah, yeah. can I just answer a question sure, in the chat? Sure, sure. Okay, okay. So Buffalo on the beat is asking: Does Win have pre-saved templates to speed up the creative mm. process with orchestral composi- uh, compositions? Mm. If yes, for which da, and can we buy them? Uh, <laughs> yes, I should, but mm. I don't. And a part of me wants to because I feel like. Yeah, my, and I'm not even thinking workflow. I mean, I have like some set up with like percussion stuff or everything's pre routed. Like everything's kind of, I, yeah, I don't. You have a basic template. I have a basic template. You don't start from zero. I don't start from zero, no. But, but I, but I'd say that my process starts from zero. I think some people have a process where like I'm always starting with drums or I'm always starting with chords. Um, So I do feel like I'm starting from zero a lot, but, but everything's, routed, ready to go. But I don't have, like, a template where it's like, okay, everything is grouped in this way, like, group, grouping of instruments, which I think is awesome. I think it's something I have to get into a bit more. But sometimes when I do that, I feel like I miss out on something, like a creative moment. Yeah, the um, happy accident. Happy accident. Um, but I use Ableton. And scoring in Ableton's weird, honestly, because it hasn't caught up, you know, they need to catch up a little bit. Um, but, but it's been great for me and, um, I use Spitfire, Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of my, like, uh, string sounds and woodwind sounds and they're great. They have great packs. Um, like the, the London Contemporary Orchestra did a whole pack. It's really cool. Um, they have an amazing choir pack. Um, and then like, yeah, I'll use like native instruments, obviously. And I have a lot of like analog gear. So all those keys boards, like the OB6 and the Udo and, you know. And you, I mean, your studio has a lot of like also outboard synths, not only VSTs. Oh, yeah, what? yeah. So outboard yeah. synths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 so yeah. The, mo- the mo- yeah, um, Sub 37 and the Udo and, and the OB6 and um, just like other weird drum machine type things. And, and then also there's a lot of percussion and drums. So. When I am, let's say, making scores, I do like to mix in those real elements. I think it gives it more yeah. of a 3D yes. vibe versus like, okay, well, this this shaker is just like a shaker loop. It's like, I'd rather just play that. And it really does make a difference when yes. it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, also, if you join the Diamonds channel, I'm putting it together, like, um, I found all this these free VSTs for, like, orchestral sounds. Because sometimes mm. orchestral packs can be a lot of money. Of course, if you're on mm. Splice and you're a Splice user, they have great uh, sample packs that you can drop into your sampler and play. Mm-hmm. And there's some VST for choir voices. You can do a mix of both. I do a mix of, like, Splice samples and, like, and VSTs. But, like, mm. buying the packs just straight out can be, like... Expensive. Yeah, like a native yeah. pack can be like pretty, can be like upwards of 600 bucks for yeah. like a really strong orchestral like sample library. Yeah. So, n- not just Shilling Splice, Splice offers like tons of resources yeah. in, in that space. And I'm also, I'll be highlighting some of those packs in the Diamonds channel along with some other free VSTs, etc. Yeah, so I love Splice because of, of that. Like, there are times when I'm like, okay, I need some, like, cinematic booms, you know? Yes. And some Foley stuff. Uh, yes, yeah. Foley. And it's all there. Yeah, do you and feel they, like, like, can you tell us, like, you know, in your work process, like, what, like... Are you using Splice more in the composition side of, of your mm. b- producing or more like when you're in with Cuddy or you're in with Ashniko mm. and those artists? Mm. Like, or is it a combination? Um, I or think... of sample libraries in general, really? Like, oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. 
Tell me that, and then I got another question. Well, you gotta tell me that. Like the sa what kind of sample libraries? Well, like I, yeah, like yeah. do you find yourself like using sample libraries more for composing or with artists? Mm, I think right now I'm using it more with the composing because I I really like hate MIDI sounding things that sound like MIDI. So like strings are seem very hard and strings and are very tough sometimes i'll to just get like to sound good yeah to i'll just kind of like if i can get like a cello just playing a real cello playing and then i'll either i'll take it and pitch it and do and then make like the melody line or there could be like a three note thing and i'll make that and i'll like harmonize underneath that with like the with like a vst so then i feel like I'm not just like taking something and being like, boom, it's like, it's still my own. I'm still kind of flipping it. Yeah. Um, and, and with, um, productions, I feel like because I'm such a weirdo with, musically, I'm, I would never call myself like, a, like I make beats, Yeah. but I feel like I'll just make something weird on, like I'll play something weird or I'll, and that'll kind of turn into something else. And then I'll, Add a beat afterwards. Yeah, and and I worked with you, girl. And then, yeah, <laughs> no, we did. And then it, <laughs> I know how you work. Oh my god! <laughs> but like, if I want a, a really good snare sound, or like mm -hmm. I get too obsessive over drums, that's for sure. I, I'll definitely type in like a certain if it's like a disco snare. I'll definitely yeah, definitely me. search on Splice for a, a great disco snare. Yes. Or um, '70s drums and stuff like that for sure. Yeah, it, like so it. I, we probably have like a similar process mm -hmm. where we're using like sample base and then doing like processing on the samples mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. blending, et cetera. Yeah. And like yeah. trying to give it that, I don't know, that sheen that's like uniquely yeah, your yeah, sound, yeah. Mm -hmm. but all with the tools that are there, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is like the modern, I don't know, that's just producing in general. And now it's yeah. just like, honestly, it's really fucking it. Cause I like, I know as a producer, and I don't know if your mind's here, like, it's like, I like, like, recently I've been doing a lot of hard techno because I'm a, a te oh, all techno head of, from the day. And like, but I like a splashy drum. Yeah. So it's like, I don't just go to the 808 or electro, electro uh, drum kits. Mm. Because I do a blend, but I like a splashy drum because I also like big beats. So I'm like mm. bringing in these influences. And honestly, like, you know, even though I, I do a drum kit, kit up I don't have it mics right now but we do have one but it's like sometimes I just want to get it and I know I can go on these resources mm -hmm. and splice other on sample libraries and just find like live yeah. snare and just do, 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 and then blend totally totally yeah and that it's hard to mix all of it and also yes. like searching on splice it is like crate digging like that it's just yes. like it's different now it's just like much faster but you we're basically crate digging and yeah, flipping flipping the sample, chopping it up, um, putting effects yeah, on it, processing, and, but running yeah. out out of your system and back mm, in. Yes, yeah, yes. yes. through pet tails. Mm -hmm. um, do, okay, we have another question in the chat. Um, what are your most used pieces in the studios? Oh. Yeah, what's your yeah, and what's your the weirdest, most surprising one? Whoa, I mean, right now I'm using the the Udo Super Six. I feel like that's my new. Is that your new girl? Girl. Is that our I'm new like, girl? Ooh, yeah, yes. and it's super fun. And and yeah, it's it ha has like it's like sensitive to touch, after touch, and um, but um, you know, I have to rehook up a lot of my things, and I still have this Roland Groove box that that I've had since I was like 18. Put it and I really want to use it. Yeah. You, you wanna know what? Yeah. I have been like hooking up all of like my my um Dr. Sample, the mm. SP three oh three. Oh or S D three oh three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. Um and buying like weird like I bought a Yamaha well, actually it was gifted for my birthday. Oh. Um a Yamaha DJ FX box with like a scratch in it from like nineteen ninety nine. It is hilarious I love and it. someone cracked it with a max patch where you can like fuck it up. whoa it is so amazing. fucking fun. i'll show it to you but like That's yeah awesome hook it up okay because like the shit sounds crazy to me yeah. because the conversion the digital the 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 conversion mm -hmm. of how they are making those sounds is wild mm. yeah i gotta get it together put it pl there. plug our girl in yeah groove box can't wait Ooh, but that's really yeah, and then like like I you know I'm a pianist, a, a keyboard yes, person. So, so I feel like 
that's just kind of where I, I start with the all of these weird scents, and then I'll just build on on top. But but, and all the guitar, everything I have is like I feel like everything's like you know the string is broken. I haven't fixed it. It's like so. I definitely get like weirder, wonkier sounds generally, but it's kind of cool too. I don't know. So tell me, like, what, like, what is when you have an artist in, mm. right? What is the process like when you're working mm. with like a Cuddy or Lizzo or Ashnito or every time serving with feet? Mm. Personal. So, yeah, yeah. And I really enjoyed making that stuff. I mean, I think it's different every time because there are artists that you vibe with mm -hmm. and that you continue to build with. And that's people like a Seven with Feet or a Jamila Woods. Yes. Or like a Twin Shadow. Like That's like you create a world. And I really... Like a sonic world. A sonic world. And, and that's that like old school producing. It's like you're, mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out what the sound is. And I love that. Versus... You know, doing sessions, uh, you know, you finish a song a day, which, I mean, we, we do that too with like Serpent or Jamila, but like, yeah, it's just a different vibe and you're maybe working with an artist that just thinks of their art differently. They're, they're maybe um, not so interested in the sonic world. They just want to focus on, you know, something that they've been, they've been talking about and it's in the, the lane of pop music, mo modern pop yes. music. So then, then my job is like, okay, well, I know that this is going to be the sounds, the drum sounds we're going to use will probably be these kinds of drum sounds. And then I'll try and like get weird in there. You try Somehow, to sneak a weird? Sneak, we're always trying to sneak there. a weird in. <laughs> um, but the Kid Cudi is a great example of something where I was working with a friend of mine, Patrick Wimberly, who I know you work with too. From Cherylith. From Cherylith. And that's a woo. Yeah, and like we used to play those shows back when they yes. so crazy. Um, and Patrick and I, every time I'm in New York, I'm always like, yo, Patrick, let's just like make some stuff. But it's never like... He's so amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, He's working like with some great people right now. And yeah, he's, he's doing great. Yeah, and he's just like, you know, and I think compared to other sessions where we're like, okay, we're making like a song. We just make like the weirdest stuff. So... In 2019, we made a bunch of ideas that basically sounds like peanuts, like like, <laughs> like um, Charlie Brown. Yeah, peanuts? like Christmas music. It's like piano and then us singing like little kids like la la la, like literally. And we were like, okay, this is fun. It was totally fun. And um, we geeked out. And then that instrumental just kind of sat around. There was a drum beat to it, but it was like kind of a whatever drum beat. Yeah. And then it somehow ended up on like the Kid Cudi desk. And I, I, you know, that's all from like people you know. And Patrick was, I think, showing people too. Like he did the Lil Yachty yes. stuff. So I think it kind of ended up there and then it maybe like made its way to Kid Cudi. So Patrick had ju just did, I think the entire Lil Yachty record. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that's just like, like really what it's about, about like being a music creative, right? Like, we're not always in there like the hits or the oh, we got right. you know what I mean. Yeah. And I notice every time I personally am in a session where I'm sort of what I like to call scheming and scamming. Mm -hmm. I'm not scamming anyone, but I'm scheming. I'm like, oh, I should lean this more towards this because mm -hmm. this is successful. I'm bringing the business into the room. Mm -hmm. Shit always is, sounds flat, mm -hmm. boring, one dimensional. Mm -hmm. I just got my ass handed to me this week mm -hmm. on no, something I, like that. And then it's like when you're just bringing your creativity. Right. I agree with you. Yeah. That especially if you're now there are producers out there, music creatives that are uh, made, and this is a complete skill set that's incredible. Where they're amazing at recreating the hits that are that are um, performing today. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. amazing at it. Yeah. They're yeah. Uh, literally unbelievable. They do really well in sync and and mm -hmm. and sort of doing. You know, if something is successful, they'll in the, in the music industry you know there'll be an array of artists that are similar mm -hmm. because of the, the market has shown that success but um and those that's an amazing skill set but i think like your background with jazz studying piano knowing the fundamentals probably doing a lot of like improvisational work mm -hmm. working in new composition that you know bringing all of that mm -hmm. to the table 
in pop music, R&B sessions, hip hop sessions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's like an edge that you have that others don't. Yeah, that's, and so that's kind of what I've realized over time. And also like other people have told, like even A&Rs or, you know, because I think I've definitely in the past got stuff like, oh, I should be like this. Yes. I need to sound like this. Or, the voice. Yeah, or like my, my mixes are this way, so I need to be this way. And like, yeah, obviously I think the mix is very important, a rough mix, but... You don't want that. You don't want to obsess over that. And then your productions or your writing isn't, com you know, really pushing through. Um, so I've just all the weirdest stuff that I've done. All those are the cuts that I have, like the stuff where I'm like, really like that one. And I'm and I'm just like, OK, well, if that's what it is, then. But you have to have the right people or the right artists that hear that too or see that too I, my stuff's not gonna work with someone who, who's who's not gonna be down around the same vision vision or sonic path or whatever but also i think it's like years of of you building like a network of great creative mm. people and like you know people i don't know i don't know if you get this question but what i do a lot of mentoring like people reach mm. out to me and i'm always open to mentor anyone is um the question is like how do you get past that gate Mm -hmm. And I mean, here's like, look out, here's a gate smash. Just be a part of your lo your music scene. Yeah. Just be a part of creativity. Communities. Community. Yeah, I mean, huge. I think we both have careers because of community. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then your community expands. I mean, one of our, mm -hmm. our you know, um, shared besties is Taylor Parks. Oh, yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. you work with her mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. all the time. I, I work with Taylor. Taylor is is one of the most amazing songwriters, executive producers mm -hmm. of music, did mm -hmm, all of Ariana mm -hmm. Grande's like big yeah. records and she's one with billion. She's doing everything. She's basically. like bought land in Nashville and was like farming. Like, micro like, hotels. I mean, just, she's, yeah, she, <laughs> that girl's crazy. It's, I know. But, it's, but, but like that's about that community because as you grow, they're growing. Exactly. Some stay in music, some don't. But everyone exactly. remembers like, oh yeah, Wynn's dope, man. She fucking, we should bring her in on yeah. this da 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 da. So, and it's vice versa. I feel like I'm also like a natural connector. Sometimes to a fault where I'll like think about everyone else and then I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Like I, but, but I feel like it's also, you know, we are in a business. Some people are very transactional, but I feel like I'm also like, hey, so-and-so should work with so-and-so. Yes. You guys need to connect. And I feel like people do remember those moments, even if that like come, I just do it naturally. And then I think because I make a point to be like, hey, you guys should do something, you guys should just meet, that that kind of comes back around for me too. Um, but community is important. Like I, even like being out and about, I mean, I'm not like out and about that much anymore, but like I, just meeting people, you never know who your future collaborator might be. Going to you, shows. Going to shows. Going to shows. Yeah, where mouth people. is huge. I could feel like that still exists of just being, if someone's like, hey, I'm looking to work with someone or, you know, producer, like just word of mouth. Like, yeah, like, like drop, mm -hmm. every drop in the bucket mm -hmm. is like important. And it also like focuses, I think, the reason why you are a creator. Mm -hmm. If you're yeah, in yeah. it for money, I would say go be a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. There's a straighter path to that. Yeah, career. yeah, definitely. <laughs> and we do think about money. It's not like we're like, uh, no, but totally. It's like it could be way easier. Like, uh, yeah. The persistence, too. It's like we stayed in this game. A lot of people I know have maybe, you know, done some other things or still in music, but not going full force, I think, the way that we do. And that takes a certain kind of mentality also. Yeah, and, and the sacrifice. community is there for mm -hmm. you. Yeah, And yeah. sacrifice, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But when yeah. you're in those down moments, I mean, just like oh, any yeah. community, they're there for you yes. to uplift yes. you. Absolutely. So that's like always my strongest gate smashing oh, yeah. uh, piece of advice over anything technical. Totally. Be a part of a community. Absolutely. What are you interested in? Go hard. Be there. Go to everyone's shows. Yeah, yeah. Be supportive. It's talk true. about their music online. Yeah. It 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 will pay back, but even mm -hmm. more than that, it gives you people like it's that are true. like minded. Yeah, yeah. So makes it more fun. I wanted to um, ask you, like, since we're in the gate smashing, this is one thing mm -hmm. that um, that I like is like I like to always ask 
my queens. Give me three of your tips, creative, mm. technical, as a music producer, music creative, mm -hmm. that really helped you and moved your um, process and your forward in a meaningful mm. way. Mm. Hmm. Okay. And it can be anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll go like, not even technical, but when I was learning how to, I'm like self taught by the way I didn't like go to engineering school or anything and I feel like there are times when that comes up and I'm like oh yeah I should I should know how to do that but um do you have a lot of friends who are and en amazing engineers and mix engineers and I think when I've learned I learned to well I, I ask a lot of questions and I ask mm -hmm. them hey how do I make my drum sound better there was a time where I really just the biggest question. Yeah. How do I make my drum sound better? Yeah. Big question. So I think just learning how to EQ was mm -hmm. like huge. And that really lifted my productions and that even, you know, keyboards, bass, like everything, just learning how to generally EQ, take out all the muddy stuff and, you know, take out the harsh tones and the high end. I mean, I'm still, I feel like every production I do, I'm still just like learning, learning, but I don't think you ever master that. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. just like the hours you put in, the more you learn, the more your mm -hmm. ears get attuned to your style yeah. of production. Yeah. So I think that, that was like a big one. And then a fun one, like, okay, side chaining. Woo! You know that oh, one. Got side chaining. <laughs> got side chain that. That one, you know. Got tuck it. <laughs> got tuck it. You got tuck it. That's a t shirt. You got tuck it and side chain. Yeah. <laughs> Just tuck it down there. You got to tuck it. You got a little tucked in there. Um, and then maybe the other one is just more like a sonic, like learning what sounds work together. Mm. Which I'm still like with drums, I feel like that's like what snare, what kind of kick work, works with this type of bass sound. You don't want, well, actually, you can do Because it can you phase. Want. Yeah, it can phase. And you can do whatever you want. I hate to say like. Don't do yeah, this, but, but, but yeah. Learn the rules before you yeah, break right, them. Right, right, right. Back to the, th back, back to right. the bass smashing 101 with Wim Bennett. <laughs> but, but yes, yeah. So, like, if you're going to have, like, a, a subby 808, your kick should probably not just be all sub, too. Or, or just, yeah, if you want something punchy, you need sounds to cut through. And I think just learning that or just a certain kind of keyboard sounds mixing with this with bass sounds and what works and the timbre yeah i don't know <laughs> those ears the journey um yeah the last thing we like to talk about yeah before i ask you to promote yourselves <laughs> i feel this is a huge just promotion. <laughs> but what you what don't give it up okay <laughs> give me a highlight and a low light of your music Ooh. journey start with the highlight wow. and me Oh, man. So, I don't know. I feel like I just, like, move on with stuff really fast. Like, I don't really think about, oh, I've done those things, whatever. Um, it's so hard. To, I feel like I've had, like, five low lights though. But like, you have like to give I've me had your so highlight. Many, like, I, I know, this. I know. Like, it goes, it's like, but a highlight, okay, I'll just do more, more recent. A highlight is probably scoring this HBO documentary called Bama Rush because Bama it, it, Rush. it felt like I, I watched it. Oh, it's really good. You did a so, great job. It's so weird. It's so it's funny. It's a crazy doc. Um, I had no idea. Just, I was just very thankful to have that opportunity. It could, it could be so hard to get through the door, and you know, because that's a that's a whole new network of people you need it to is. meet. It's a whole new the group. composer network. Yeah, composers, directors, TV producers, like totally different scene. Yeah, build that Rolodex. Yeah, exactly, and um, yeah, just like. The, that director and, and the producers of the show, they are the movie. They they trusted me, and so thankful for them. And that, and you need people like that who yes. champion you. You know, um, otherwise you're you know you really need those kinds of people. Um, so that was a highlight and well Give deserved. They should be championing you. They made the right decision. That's yeah. sweet. Thank you. Go. Um, and then a low a low light. Um, um uh, <laughs> so we all have low lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In career, probably like. Probably like for me, I wouldn't say like one one thing. It was just kind of like a, a vibe when when I we started kind of hanging, mm -hmm. and I was kind of in the middle of like you know I was going through business stuff and didn't know like mm. 
like manager situation at the mm-hmm. time. This was the like, team. Yeah, this the was like, team. This was like 2017, I want to say, or 2016. I but, yes, um, 20, 20. I remember. Yeah, yeah, 2016, and and I was like getting my feet wet in producing, but I just felt like I didn't have a support system of trying to work with the people I was trying to work with, and then as uh, obviously as like a woman, and then that's a whole thing and. You and, needed the team. Yeah, or just someone to be like, boom. And I had, like, a few good people. Um, but I think that moment, I was like, what am I doing? What am I really trying to do out here? Why am I doing music? It's not to, like, just be like, I'm going to make hits forever and then just try and be, I want to be in those rooms. But that shouldn't be the focus of mm-hmm. my full career and yeah, it was just like a weird moment, and I was like, "You're having the existential having, music crisis." I really moment. was. We've all had and I was it. Like, well, I, I have was it like, "I was like Amanda," <laughs> and then we started going to coffee. Yeah, yeah, and I was just like spilling all the tea to Amanda, all my shit. She drove that orange Mazda Miata over, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I was I like, "This." <laughs> I was like, "This is oh that your God. car, dude." Totally, I like, like a yellow uh, Miata. It was like bright yellow. Oh, it was yeah, yeah. And oh, I w- but I couldn't. It was like orange yellow. I couldn't hide. Like I don't want like anyone who would see me. I was like, well, I just so want you to know you're doing everything right by this whip. It was uh, <laughs> fucking amazing. Like you can't you know? go wrong with. But it was the community. I mean, we were there for each other. For yeah. Through that. Yes. Yes. Sometimes a- you can feel alone or isolated in these because it is a tough business. This isn't like a business for. The, the faint of heart. It's no. very, very, it can be very, it can be very challenging. It, it, can be, it can be challenging. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember you, we talked a lot about. I just was like, sometimes you just need you get in that feedback loop. I call it the feedback loop. Yeah, and you need yeah. someone to just go, dude, you're Win Bennett. Mm-mm, like, mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. like any film mm-hmm. person should be honored that you would even mm-hmm. consider to work with them. And sometimes it's about like you might want to work with certain people, but they, but they. You're like, oh, I know I'm going to work with those people, or whether it's in business or um, creatively, but yes. they're just not, like, fucking with you. So you have to find your people. And I think that's what I've been learning even more these days, especially with the scoring stuff. It's like, find your people, because there's always going to be find it. clicks or crews, and it's like, that person who wants to work with you is going to find you. Mm-hmm. It might take a really long time, but that it, it happens. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. So, what are you working on next? Can you tell us anything? Ooh. Can you spill that tea? Oh, that tea! <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you do a session with me, this is basically what it's like. Yeah, like, yeah. The entire time, like every five seconds, <laughs> is like total ADHD. <laughs> totally. So I'm like, what's up, everyone? Like. <laughs> Should totally. the song be about? Ew. I love it. We do. We do get shit done that too. We do. Yeah, yeah girl. <laughs> we're serious. I, I gotta pick up my three-year-old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got like real. <laughs> we have real life. Yeah, seriously. I know. I have a. Yeah, we have. I have a two and a half. We have babies. Right? Yeah, babies. Um. Yeah. And they love each other. Our yeah. babies. They will start a cool band. I hope so. <laughs> be, cool. be. Be, yeah, I mean, be, be. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean the Kid Cudi is something that's gonna come out. That's so huge. The Jamila Wood stuff is Jamila. Coming out. How much did great. you work work on the Jamila? Did you do the whole album? I did three songs. Amazing. Um, I have remixed amazing. for her, oh, but cool. I love her. She's a great person, collaborator. Wow. Like it was, and that was like a long process, like through the pandemic, just doing like sessions on Wow Zoom, and then that went to real life sessions and then now her album's coming back, yes so. she's on secretly canadian mm-hmm. group yeah 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 Yeah. so look out for kid cuddy's next album when oh, is yeah. it coming out i think it got pushed i think it's january now. okay so t- early 2024 and jamila when is and jamila, that? that's october 13th wow yeah. so jamila woods we got three records produced by the iconic Win Bennett, mm. Kid Cudi, obviously one of the most iconic artists in hip hop R&B, obviously. Yeah. Like, yeah, and yeah. in the past twenty years, like it blows my mind how many times I hear day and night on normal radio. I know. To I this know. day, I'm like, WTF? The song is, yeah. it is awesome, but holy, that's so yeah, rare. Yeah, I, I you know? also forgot like how huge. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. He's, yes. He's very thankful for that. So, you know, look out for that. Also, like, can you tell everyone where they can follow you? Social media, Henny. Oh, my goodness. Um, Instagram, who is win? 
with no E though, and that's confusing. Um, <laughs> but my name is with an E, but it's who is when. Who is when. And I should be more on Twitter, and I'm, I'm not, but I am on there. Um, I am totally. on TikTok. I Love don't it. really post, but I look at a lot of like alien stuff and people <gasps> selling crystals, and that's cool. But I do want to post more on TikTok. I think it'd be fun. Um, but yeah, really, who is when is my handle and on Instagram. So follow when yeah. who is when with no e. Um, and let me just drop it in the chat ruse for you. Huh? No, I'm not. Later, I will. Um, and like, look out for everything she's doing. I mean, composing, touring, Twin Shadows sounds like oh, you're yeah. gonna be doing mm -hmm. more things, doing more shows. Yeah. Um, and, uh, productions and pop, hip hop, R&B, composing, docs, films. Mm -hmm. It's insane touring musician. Okay. Just fit balancing. Multi-hyphenated. Yeah, well, you too, man. I can't wait for your uh, album to drop. Uh, Tell me about that. Tell me, <laughs> no. Tell me about that album. It's too hot what to is talk it? about. It's too hot. <laughs> Um, all right, and for everyone who joined the stream, please come and join the Diamonds channel on Splice's Discord. I'm going to be putting a lot of information on how to get started as a producer, some great different effects chains that will help you make your drum sound better, mm. uh, vocal chains, etc. but also songwriting tips, production tips. Mm -hmm. um, one of the sub-channels we have there is History of Music. I've been doing a lot on electronic music as I'm like Love as I'm like that. a I die for uh the history of electronic music mm -hmm. specifically so I've been putting a lot of great docs on Drexia cool. Juan Atkins the history of electro and um Jeff Mills is I'm gonna be diving into Ooh, next. So wow, that's great. Yeah, so mm. come and learn, know what you love, ask us questions, and be part of the community, and we'll see you next time. Cool. Bye. Bye. <laughs>